Hello, in this episode of Trade Point Code, we'll be looking at how to update and delete records in our MySQL database from our PHP file. This is a part of our mini PHP series in which we look to create a CRUD attendance list application. In the previous part, we looked at how to insert into the database and also fetch the records that we have in our database. So to get started, we have to ensure that the Apache and MySQL servers are still running and then we head to the code editor. Remember, in the browser, this is the current output of our code. For the update, we'll be using this update button that we have attached to each record. So let's locate the update button. We can find it in the list section with a class of list buttons. So we are going to achieve the update feature by sending a GET request with the A tag we have here. So we are going to send important details as GET request to the index.php file which we are currently in. So we do that in the href property. So first of all, we want to send our GET request to the index.php file. Now we want to concatenate the values that we have in our participant variable into the link. So let's add a PHP tag and echo the concatenation. Now to start with the variables, we bring a question mark. The first value we attach is the ID. Remember, we fetched for the ID, but we didn't use it here. Looking at the select query, we see that we fetched for the ID. So we put that as the update ID. Now before the next variable, we bring the ampersand. We do the same for the full name. Remember, we are adding all these variables so that we'll be able to fetch them back into the input field. Because when a user clicks on update, we want to fetch the data into the input field so that the user can go ahead to edit them and save the change by updating. Now let's save and go to the browser. In the browser, let's refresh the page. Now let's click on the update and see what happens. Now when we click on update and look at the link, we see that all the get values that we attached are showing up here. Now we see that the update ID equals 3. Let's check for the other records. For the first record, we see that the ID is 1. And for the second record, we see that the ID is 2. So it's working fine. Now let's proceed by heading back to the query later. Now for the input fields, whenever the get values are set, we want to fetch them and put them into the input fields as the values so that it will present the opportunity for the user to edit. That is in the browser, when we click on update, we want the values that we have here to be populated into the input fields that we have. We will do that using the value property of the fields. So for the first one, we add a value property. Now because we want to populate the field only when a get value for the particular field is available, we make use of the PHP is set function here. For the first field, we'll check for the index number. This should be the same name as what you used in the link. Now to make this cleaner, we'll make use of the ternary function. So we follow this with the question mark. That if the get value in this number has been set, we want to return that value. Otherwise, we want to return an empty string. So we'll do the same for all the other fields. So let's copy this line of code. But we'll leave the submit button for now. So we change the index number here to full name. And do same for this one. Now for the email, we change the name to email. Now for the submit button, we want to change the value to update whenever the update has been clicked. So that when the user clicks to update a particular record, 
you end up seeing an update button instead of submit again. So we do that by checking if an update ID has been set. Remember, we pass the update ID in the link here. So once again, we use the PHP tags. We check if the update ID has been set. First of all, we check for the negative version, that is if the update ID has not been set. We need some more PHP tags. Now if the update ID has not been set, we want to return our regular button. Otherwise, we want to return the same button but with some changes. First, we change the name to update attendance. And we change the value to update. Now up to this point, let's save and check our browser. Now let's try and click on update. Now when we click on update, we see that the input fields are populated with the data. And it's the same for all the other records. Now we see that the button 2 has changed to update instead of the submit that we had initially. So it means that everything is working fine. Now all we have to do is to proceed to update this in the database. So let's go back to the code editor. We will do this at the top in the PHP tag, right below the read section. Now what we are going to do here will be very similar to the insertion. So let's copy and paste the code. So first of all, instead of submit attendance, we check for update attendance. We will leave these three values alone, but in addition, we will add the update ID and also the arrival time. But this time around, we will get those values from the get global variable. Remember, time is the name we use down there in the link. Now checking for the empty fields, we leave it as it is. Now we go ahead to change the query. Instead of insert into, we will change it into update. Now we get rid of the fields too. The value cell will not be needed, so we change it to set. So we are updating the table attendance and we will set the index number in the table to the new index number value that we have here. That is this value. So we set index number to our index number here. Also, we will set the full name to the full name that we have here. We will do the same for the email as well. Now we need the where condition. So we want to make these changes where the record of the ID is equal to the update ID we have here. And also the arrival time equals the arrival time that we have here. We are using these two conditions to make sure that we are actually updating the right record. Now for the result here, we will leave it as it is. But for the error message in the header, we we'll change it to an error of care while updating. We will maintain the index number, full name and email as well. But in addition, we will add a time to it. For the else block too, we will change the message here to attendance updated successfully. So we can save and go ahead to try in the browser. So now let's try updating this record that we have here. So instead of Jeffrey White, we try something else. So let's say Jeffrey Barnes. And let's change the email to jeffreybarnes at gmail.com. Let's click on update. Now on updating, we see that attendance updated successfully is being displayed. But actually, the attendance list has not been updated yet. 
So let's try and fix that. So apparently, the get variables, update ID and time are not getting to our handle update block. This is due to the action of our form. The action of our form points to index.php. So whenever we submit, the URL changes to index.php and we lose our get variables which are passed alongside the URL. So to ensure that we still submit to index.php and maintain our get variables, we will change the action to hash and it will do the same thing as index.php. That is because we are inside the index.php file, so using the hash will still submit the form to the index.php. But in this case, we will be able to keep our get variables. There is another method to do this, in which the variables that we are passing as get values will be made post variables so that we can submit it along with the other post variables that we have. We will see how to implement that in the next episode. So now let's save our code and try again in the browser. Now let's try and update Olga Smith. Let's change the name to Olga Smith Wilson. Now once we update, we see that Olga Smith Wilson is being displayed. That is, now our update is actually working. Let's try again for Jenny Jackson. Let's add white to the name. Once again, we can see that the update is working. Now let's go ahead to handle the delete. Now for the delete, we will once again do something very similar to the update. We will pass the ID of the item to be deleted and also the timestamp as get variables. So let's copy the href value of the update button and make some changes. First of all, we will change the update ID to delete ID. Now we will not need the index number so let's get rid of it. We also not need the full name and we don't need the email. Once we've done that, let's go to the top and handle the delete. So we go to the end of the update block and start our delete block. So now we'll check if the get variable delete ID has been set. If it has been set, we will go ahead to fetch it into a variable and also fetch the time as well. Remember we named our get variables delete id and time. Now once we have the values, let's write the query. So we will delete from attendance table. Where the id of the table is equal to our delete id and the arrival time is equal to the arrival time that we have here. You shouldn't forget the semicolon inside the query string. Now looking at the where, we can see that it's very similar to the update. Now once again, we'll do something very similar to the update, so let's copy this block. In this case, we will not be populating the data into the input fields, so we will not check for any empty fields. we we'll just go ahead and run the query. So once the delete button is clicked, the item will just be deleted. So for the first part, when there is an error, we will change the message to an error occurred while deleting. But this time around, we don't need to pass all this data. Now if the query was successful, we also change the message to attendance deleted successfully. Now let's go ahead and try this out. So we save the code and go to the browser. So now let's say I want to delete the Jeffrey White record. When I click on delete, we see that attendance deleted successfully and the record is no more. Now what if I refresh the page? Now on refreshing, we still see that the record is no more and it shows that we have only two records in our database. Now let's visit our PHP my admin to confirm. Now 
Now on refreshing, we see that we truly have only two records in our database. Now let's try adding another record and also deleting again. So now we have another record. Let's go ahead to delete our very first record. Once again, the delete has worked. Going back to the database and refreshing, we see that our first record has been deleted and we have two new records here, so everything is working fine. So in this episode, we've seen how to delete and update records in MySQL database from our PHP project. In the next episode, we'll see how to implement jQuery Ajax in our PHP project. So that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.